Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to this episode of Course Creators. I'm your host, Sarah Cordner, and today we are going to be talking about the nine stages of building a wildly successful online course. Maybe you're already creating online courses. Perhaps you're just thinking about it and just don't know where to start. In this particular episode, we're going to give a bird's eye view, an overview of all of the major phases that you're going to have to go through and consider and prepare for when you're putting together your online course so that you know what to expect and some of the things you're going to need to put into place as you're putting your online course or even courses together. So let's start with the first thing we must consider. And that, of course, is picking a topic. Now, often what I found with experts, with thought leaders, with speakers, authors, and edupreneurs is not that they don't know what to do. It's actually that they have way too many topics or ideas that they could be picking. So we want to make sure that we're going to pick a topic that people are interested in. That's important because we want people to buy and enroll in our course when it's completed. But also what we need to think about is something that we're truly passionate about, something that we can give ourselves to. Because the thing with building online courses is that building it isn't the end. Once we've built the course, then we actually have to spend a considerable amount of time then living and breathing and marketing that program to make sure that it's successful. So. I've got three things that you need to do right now. Grab yourself a pen and paper so that you can make sure you are picking the perfect online course topic. So first of all, you really want to make sure that that online course is something that you absolutely love. It's something that you're passionate about. So first of all, write down 100 things that you love so that you know you're passionate. Now, this can be anything. It doesn't have to be something in a professional niche. All of the things that you love in the world, write down 100 things. The next thing we're going to do is we're then going to write down 100 things that we know how to do. So this can be anything. This can be professional skills. It can be just things we do in our everyday lives, but things that you know how to do. Obviously, if you're going to be teaching someone something, we're going to be focusing on those things that we do know. And then the third thing I'd like you to write down is all of the things that you have experience in. So one of the greatest online course topics might not necessarily be some kind of expert topic. What it could be is a life experience that you've been through. Overcoming certain life challenges does legitimately qualify you to teach other people how you overcame that particular experience. There are people out there that may be at the beginning of an experience that you've now got through. And whether you realize it or not, you will have used certain strategies to overcome that experience. So you can now teach other people here at the start of that what you did to overcome it. So the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to look at our list of 100 things we love, 100 things we know how to do, and 100 things we have experience in. Then what I want you to do is next to every single item is write down whether you can do that thing really, really well or not very well. Whether you love that thing a little or love that thing a lot. Where one is not very much and 10 is I absolutely love it. I know this really, really well or I'm really experienced in this. Now, if you grab yourself an Excel sheet, if you pop all of these down into a column, you can actually very quickly and easily filter that, those columns so that you have all of the tens right at the top. And now, if you have across the top of your Excel sheet topics that all have 10, 10, 10, 10, you have got yourself the perfect online course topic. So that's my quick tip for picking the perfect topic. Stage number two for building yourself a wildly successful online course is to check whether that course has high market demand. Now, you are going to put serious blood, sweat and tears into this online course, so you need to make sure that people are actually going to buy it at the end. So, there's a couple of things we need to do for this, and uh, there are numerous ways that you can check market demand. I'm only going to give you a couple of the first checks to do today. Now, the first one is to go onto Google and quite 
quite simply type in your online course idea. So perhaps you have some keywords that your course is about. If you're teaching Facebook advertising, clearly those are your keywords. If you're teaching how to build a website, clearly those are your keywords. So pop those down into Google and first of all, just see what comes up. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people think that if there is a lot of competition in their particular topic, that it's not a good idea. But actually, ironically, the more searches that come up in your particular topic idea means that it's a good thing. Because it means that if there's lots of activity, there's lots of things going on in that particular topic, that clearly people are interested in it and clearly people want to buy it. So that is the first check you're going to do when it comes to seeing if your course has high market demand. Secondly, what we're going to do then is we are going to have a look at the other online courses on the market because it's all well and good, first of all, establishing that people want our content and want our product, but we really want to make sure that our course is different because if we're going to build one that's the same as everyone else's, then we're going to have to fight really hard to make sure that ours gets seen. And what we don't want to be doing is playing advertising wars. We want to be playing value mag magnetation, basically, if that's a word. But what we're going to do is we're going to search online course marketplaces such as Udemy. This is a great one to start with, U-D-E-M-Y. Type in your course idea on a platform like that. And what this will do is bring up all of the other courses that exist in that particular topic area. Again, this is going to give you an idea as to how many other courses and competition exists, how yours can be different, of course, but also, again, how high the demand is. Now, the great thing about this platform is you can actually see how many students are enrolled in those courses. You can you can see even the reviews, you can see the curriculum outline and everything that's delivered. So this is going to really clearly tell you if lots of students are enrolling in courses that are similar to what yours is going to be, that you do have a course that has high market demand. So those are the two main checks that I'm going to just simply run you through just to check if your course has high market demand. There's lots of other ways to check and do check into some of the other episodes on the Course Creators channel to find out how you can make sure that you have a successful course. The third thing we're going to look at on building a wildly successful online course is you then need to look at what is this course going to give my students? And this is all about understanding what your aims, your objectives and your learning outcomes are going to be. Now, the thing with the modern day world is that we all have freely uh, available access to information. There's information everywhere. And in fact, the biggest problem is that most of us are overloaded with it. I'm quite sure that if I said to you, you know, have you ever bought a book that you've never read? Or have you ever enrolled in an online course that you haven't yet taken? The chances are you'd say yes. <laughs> so what we don't want to do is we don't want to just overload our students with information and promise them that we're going to teach them to learn about something. What we want to do to have a wildly successful online course is very clearly define what the result of our course is going to be. We want to show them that we are going to actually give them something. We're going to take things off of their to-do list instead of giving them more to put onto it. So our learning outcomes do a couple of things. Learning outcomes clearly define in a measurable manner exactly what the outcome will be. And I say measurable because we have to use certain language when we're writing our learning outcomes that clearly define exactly the outcome that will take place. So for instance, we're going to use verbs. We're not going to say, by the end of this course, you will understand how to something. You are going to um, say things like, by the end of this course, you will be able to define the seven step process for. By the end of this course, you'll be able to articulate the methodology for. What you don't want to do is just say understand or learn because they're not measurable, they're vague, and they don't actually clearly define the result. And therefore, people may have the wrong conception about what your course is going to achieve for them. And when people go into a course with unclear ideas of what they're going to get from it, this is when you can run the risk of having dissatisfaction Satisfaction. You're going to have students coming and going, well, I thought your course was going to do X for me, but it didn't. And that's not because your course didn't deliver necessarily. It can be because the way the learning outcomes or the promises of the course were written are that they, they weren't written clearly and defined enough. So that third stage of this, of this course creation process is to sit down and look at all of the modules you plan to deliver and ask yourself these three questions. By the end of my course, my students will be able to do what? 
So do, these are all the practical skills your students are going to be able to do. These are practical, physically demonstrable um, activities that they will be able to perform as a result of delivering or taking your training program. So what will they be able to do by the end of your course? The next thing you're going to ask is what will they know by the end of your course. So what knowledge will they have gained? Will they understand certain concepts? Write down the exact knowledge that they will gain. And then finally, write down how they will feel by the end of your course. So will they feel more confident in something? Will they feel less fearful about something? So once your students clearly understand what skills they will be able to get, do, what knowledge they will be able to gain, and exactly what feelings they will have or not have by the end of your course, and that those are written in measurable verb language, also known as Bloom's Taxonomy, if anyone wants to look that up. They to continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.